Our lesson today is entitled Old and New and is found in the book of Romans chapter 7 verses 1 through 12. This is Sunday School Lesson for October the 8th, 2023. My name is Tony Miller. And the key verse for our lesson today is found in the C portion of the sixth verse of our text. And it reads as follows, so that we serve God in the newness of the spirit and not the oldness of the letter of the law in love. Uh, the law is love and our subject again is love. I mean, old and new. So the aim of this lesson is understanding Paul's use of marriage as a metaphor of the law and grace and understanding how the law is always relevant, even for Christians, and understanding the difference between obeying the law to earn God's favor versus obeying the law as a response to God's favor. This is my YouTube channel. I ask you please hit the subscribe button and notification bell and you get my lessons automatically. Please like my lesson. If I give you any value at all, please like my lessons. Please share my lessons and leave me comments. All of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are just grateful that again, that you have given us an amazing lesson, Lord, that you have come. Lord, we have come together at this moment and assembled around your word anxiously awaiting to hear something from you that's amazing and miraculous lord and we're grateful well right now i ask forgiveness of my sins lord wash me and make me a worthy vessel to be used by you i surrender my will at this moment lord use me as your humble servant i pray that all that learn at this moment will come together that i will speak with clarity and coherently that those seeking you this those seeking to hear a word from you would understand Lord, I pray that you'll send us the true teacher, the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, your spirit, Lord, that you would guide and teach this lesson, Lord, that all of us will learn something that will draw us closer to you. We thank you for this opportunity to share a word with you in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. So again, our lesson with a little bit of background, again, Romans uh, chapter 6. Uh, verse 23, again, it's famous text, as you probably all know, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord. Let's give you some more background as we move on into our lesson. Amen. So all who sin apart from the law will perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. Again, we're in this book of Romans, and just sharing with you some nuggets that help us to frame this lesson amen so this law the law law is not just those 10 as everybody knows but it's 16 and 13 of those laws and that law could not save anyone if you break one of them you're guilty of all of them the law requires perfection again let's move on the law of the spirit Versus the law of sin and death. There's two dichotomy about this old law. Paul contrasts the two laws, the law of the spirit and the law of sin and death. So the law of the spirit is the gospel or the good news of Jesus, the message of a new life through faith in the resurrected Christ. And the law of sin and death is the old uh, testament of the old, the law of God. The law was holy, just and good as part of our lesson. But because we cannot keep the law on our own, the result is only sin and death for those under the law. That's this whole old and new dichotomy that we're sharing as part of this lesson. Amen. That the, the law and grace, the old and the new, that the, the law was slavery, but grace is freedom. The law is bondage and legalism. But grace is, again, freedom. And the, the law is confinement, but grace is liberty. The law is abuse, but grace is freedom. The sin, a uh, death uh, in sin versus alive in Christ. The law gives one the ability to measure faith and provides one with the ability to earn God's ability and acceptance. Because we say, hey, God, I did it all right. You did it all right. It's on 
on our own abilities and not God for our approval. With grace, God alone gets the glory. We're saved by grace alone and not by our own selves. It's a gift of God, lest men would boast about how well they kept that law. Again, the old law versus the new grace. If that's our subject, old and new. Let's move on. So this epistle of Romans, I share with you the same last week. The book of Romans, the Pauline epistle, this letter from Paul, the apostle Paul, wrote it roughly about 56 to 57 AD, about 20 years after the cross. And Paul wrote the letter to the believers in Rome, hence the name Romans. The book of Romans revealed the answer to important questions and supplies information on topics such as salvation, the sovereignty of God, and judgment, and spiritual growth, and righteousness of God. And many, many scholars also describe it as a gospel of righteousness of God, which can be received only by faith in the atoning death of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's give more background. It's almost ready to get into this. Let's, I'm not going to hold you long, but we'll get there. Amen. So the book of uh, Romans chapter 1 through 6, at the beginning of this letter, Paul addresses two different methods of justification that people have been uh, disputing over. Justification by works and justification by faith. And he explains that God has transitions from his works to faith based justification in Jesus resurrection leads to justification and life for all regardless of their nationality and background we're Jew or Gentile right and we respond to this gracious gift by submitting to God and his commandments out of love and faith and he uh, in Jesus in chapter 6 we uh, are insisted that uh, are we are instead set free by God for the purpose of now becoming subject to righteous. I shared with you this lesson a few years ago. So our background short and sweet, let's jump on into this lesson. Amen. Again, our background about uh, eight minutes. Let's get on into this lesson. So the introduction of chapter 7 is where we are today in this letter to the Romans. Paul has explained that we are saved by grace and not by observing the law because Christ died for us. This does not give us permission to sin. Rather, we should serve God by being slaves of righteousness. Paul clarifies the relation between the law and sin in chapter here in chapter 7 and he begins by giving us a, an analogy of marriage and he is speaking to the Jewish believers uh, because they're the ones who are most concerned about this law that's how we've gotten here let's jump into our text amen so Sunday school lesson old and new we're here in the, in the uh, epistle to the church at Rome Chapter 7, verses 1 through 12. Let me use the Amplified this week. I'm quite busy this week. I actually have three lessons I'm doing this week. And uh, and, uh, and and God has blessed me to be able to share the, his word with uh, with, uh, with uh, three different groups of folks. And, and I'm blessed in that regard, Lord. And, I, and I, I'm, uh, um, I'm, I'm humbled just to have this opportunity to share this lesson with you as well. And here we begin here in the Amplified and uh and verse one and two or do you know brothers and sisters again paul is speaking to jewish believers at this moment for i am speaking to those who know the law right that the law has justifications to rule over a person as long as he lives verse two for the married again this is the example that he's sharing with you for the married woman as an example is bound by and remains bound by the law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released and exempt from the law concerning her husband. Again, he's giving us a metaphor here that is that again, when you're married, as long as you you live, that the that the contract is in force. Let's magnify this contract. Amen. That when we get married we we have this vow that that most everyone 
uh, takes unless they write their own vows. And he says that I, thus and so, will take uh, you, the other person, to be my lawfully wedded wife or husband, to have and to hold from this day forth, for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, to in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish from this day forward till death do us part. That's the contract that we do until death we part. Let's move on in our text. Amen. Old and new in verse 3 of our text. Accordingly, she will be designated an adulteress if she reunites with another man while her husband is alive. And I share with you in the backdrop, and this is a lesson that we taught recently about the woman who they said they caught her in a very act of sin, that she has had multiple men. And, and, and again, she was an adulteress and, and Jesus was writing on the ground and he says that he was without sin will cast the first stone. If you remember this lesson that she was an adulteress caught in the very act. But if her, her husband dies, she is free from the law regarding marriage so that she is not an adulteress. If she marries another man. And Jesus was trying to teach us the law with this respect for this uh, circumstance. And Paul now writes to us that it's okay. If the person dies, you're okay to move on and find another one to marry. Again, Paul teaching us the law, teaching us how we should interact if indeed one of our partners die, man or woman. And now let's move on. Paul talks about we had a contractual relationship with that person. And once one of the people die, that contract is ultimately severed. Let's move on to our text. Amen. In verse 4 of our text, therefore, again, Paul teaching to uh, these Jewish believers, but they're still believers as well. Therefore, my, my fellow believers, you who die to the law, through the crucified body of Christ so that you may belong to another. Again, that he's speaking that, 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 yeah, you were once connected to the law, but now, but now, therefore, now you have this relationship with, with, with Christ and, you, and that relationship has been severed, that contract has been severed to whom was raised from the dead in order that you may bear fruit for God. That now that you don't have two rings but now you're connected with Christ as that is who you're married to. We are the bride of Christ, right? That, that we're no longer following after the law. We're following after that grace I share with you as we began. Let's talk about the bearing the fruit for God. Let's, and that's what Jesus wants us all to do. He's left us all with a task to do to bear fruit for the gospel's sake. Let's move on. That Jesus has left us all with this one task. And he tells us all that we're supposed to go into the world and we're supposed to make disciples and 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 uh and, and teach them to obey obey all these things, uh baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything that Jesus left us to to share with the world. That's our commandment, that's how we bear fruit, that we go into the world and we will share our message we'll share the gospel we'll share our testimony we will share our life will be a representation of of christ that our life then the folks will see us and want to follow christ that's our commission in this world move on to our text amen it's old and new in verses five and six of our text again paul speaking when we were living in the flesh, trapped in sin, again, speaking to these Jewish believers, the sinful passions which were awakened by that which the law identifies as sin were at work in our body to bear fruit for death. Since we had this willing to sin led to the death and separation from God, and that's what death is. Death is basically the separation uh, of, of the body and the spirit 
And he said, we cover our sin, we're separated from God because God is holy and righteous and cannot be in our presence. In verse six, but now we have been released from the law and it's penalty, of the penalty of the, of the law is breaking. One of those laws is death of the flesh. Share with you in the beginning, having died through Christ to that which we were held captive, that law, that we serve God in the newness of the spirit and not by the oldness of the letter of the law. That's what Paul is trying to get us to understand that no longer we were, we were married to the law, that now we're married to Christ. We're married to a new dispensation, a new way of living, a new a way of life. We're under a dispensation of grace and not under the, the law. Let's magnify a point here in the next cell. Amen. That for sin uh, shall not have dominion over us anymore, right? That we are not under the law, but we're under this grace. I share with you this lesson I taught in chapter 6 some time ago. Let's move on to our text. Amen. It's old and new in verse 7. But what shall we say then? Is the law is the law sin? Is the law was a law is a law sinful? Certainly not, Paul says. On the contrary, it is not. Uh, if it had not been for the law, I could have not recognized sin. That the law was a stop sign. Remember before you had a law that you could go, and I share with you this message many times, that if a car was screaming down 100 miles an hour into a residential uh, area and there was no stop sign, that the, the guy could do it because he was not violating the law, but as soon as you put up a sign, then he had to stop. And thus, that's what the law was, that it was giving us some parameters to live by, that we could not have society where it was all lawless, that the law came to give us some parameters. For I would not have known, for example, about coveting that belongs to one another and would not have had uh, no sense of guilt because I didn't have a law. If the law had not been repeatedly said that you should not cover it, then I would have been coveting because I didn't know that there was a stop sign there. And that's what Paul is saying, that the law was still important. It was not sin. It was certainly important enough to give us some abilities, but it was not sin whatsoever. So Paul is trying to help us to understand, speaking to these Jewish believers, in order to give them understanding of this transition that we are now making. Let's move on to our text. Amen. In verses 8 and 9 of our text, and again, that he says, that, but sin find an opportunity through the commandment to express itself, produce in me every kind of covenant and sinful desire, because that's who we are. And that covenant is a desire to have possessions of somebody else's. That's why I share with you that, that we get into that, that thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife or house, right? It's about you want to covet your neighbor's stuff. You want the stuff your neighbor has. He's got a a cute wife, he's got a great looking house, he got a great car, he's got a good job or whatever he has with money. You want to you want that. That's the covenantness covetousness. For without the law, sin is death. The recognition of sin is inactive in verse 9. And I was once alive without the knowledge of the law, right? I, I could do all of the all of the crap that I did, but when the commandment came, I understood its meaning. And sin became alive and I died because uh, since the law sentenced me to death because if I violate any one of those 613 laws then I am guilty of them all and my sentence is the wages of sin is death. That's why I share with you that in the beginning. Magnified points in one point in verse 8 and one point in verse 9. So we move on on this background again. A little bit of background and magnify the points in 8 and 9. Amen. That apart from the law, sin was dead, was dead. The law shows us how great the evil of sin is. The sin can take something good and holy like the law, because that's what God was just putting up some parameters for us, and twisting into most uh, evil, 
sin corrupts and it wraps love and the lust that one could be could be in love with someone, but now because of sin, you can cause a violent act against that person, a sinful violent act that was once something that was beautiful, because, but because of the sin present in us, causes us to do horrible things. Move on to verse 9, magnification, let's move on. Amen. But when the commandments came, sin revived and man died because they could not could not adhere to the law but when we do come to know the law the law shows us our guilt and excites our rebellion as well that's a problem the law only brings forth more sin and death because we are naturally lawbreakers and i'm gonna give you an example i remember the story this uh, preacher was saying one time that he says that that he lived on a corner lot and there was an alleyway in the back of the house and the kids were all playing and running across the alleyway and cars were coming through and he comes out and said, hey you kids, you stop running out here in, the, uh, in that, you go, when are you going to get ran over by a car? And then they, uh, they, uh, he comes back and they're still doing it. So he got a, a chalk and he drew a line on the, on the, on the, on the sidewalk and he says, not one of you better cross this line or I'm going to come back and I'm going to whoop you all. And now he would go back in and, and then he would come back later. And when he comes back later, every one of those kids has their toes up against that line. That's our propensity for sin. That's our natural law breaking, you know, who we are that, that, that we'll, we'll take it up to the letter of the law or we'll even go cross over it. That's what the law did. It made us, we would take it to the edge and we'll cross over as well. And, and again, that's what Paul is trying to help us to understand about this relationship to the law and ourselves and our sinful nature. Let's move on uh, to verse uh, 11, uh, 10 to 11. Amen. So, and the very com commandment which was intended to bring life actually proved to bring death for me. That, that, that the, the law was initially 10 simple rules that God gave these people in the wilderness to live by, right? Just said, I'm going to make it easy for you, give you 10 simple rules. But our tendency, our willingness to sin changed that, right? And that's what happened that we, just like when, even when, he, when, when, uh, when Moses went up on the mountain and he took a while that, that they even made a golden calf because they couldn't wait on God. That's what sin does. Sin co corrupts us. And, and again, that even though the simplicity of what God just wanted to give you some simple rules that our sinful nature causes us to, it's our willingness to sin sees in this opportunity through the commandments, it beguiles us to sin, beguiles us and completely deceives us, using it as a weapon to kill us and ultimately will separate us from God. That's what Paul is saying, what happens in this sinful nature when we're bound by the law and trying to keep the law, the law forces us to move because of our sinful nature that we take our toes to the edge of the law. Before the law, we didn't even care, but now that we have a law, we stand right to the edge of this sin. Next one. Verse 12, this is the last verse of our printed text. And Paul writes to these people and he says, so then, the law is holy and commandment is holy and righteous and good. Paul says that the law is holy and the commandments are holy and just and good. Well, if righteousness means morally perfect, again, that's what you have to do in order to keep that law. I think I have two cells to close out this lesson. It's short and sweet, but I think that it has some understanding of who we are in Christ and why that the law was, uh, why did grace come? Because our sinful nature could not sustain that us keeping those 10 and then ultimately comes 613 that all require moral perfection. Let's move on. 
because Jesus fulfilled the righteousness for the perfect requirements of the law. Jesus died in our place, our place on that cross. And now we are in Christ, right? And we're not under that contract of the law that now we are, we're married to Christ. We're the bride of Christ. Jesus did not erase the law. He fulfilled the law. He came to fulfill the law. God gave us the law and, and, and Jesus came to fulfill it. The old law was fulfilled, was fulfilled for us. And we thank God for the, uh, the law, uh, this new law of grace. Because of our willing, sinful nature, there was no way we could have continued to keep that old law. Just not in us. We just not built that way. We, you know, just because of the sinful nature, we're going to take it to the, to the uh, nth degree of the law and violate it as well. I'm going to last self to close out this lesson. The law was important. The law was important for us. So the law was the schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. And it was, again, the, God just gave us some 10 little perfect little rules for us to live by. It became more. It was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith ultimately that's what we are Galatians 3 and 24 they were our lessons about the old way and the new way that we're saved by grace through faith not of ourselves unless we'll boast about we're having all of these abilities that we do not have we cannot keep a law but we can be saved by what Christ did at the cross in Calvary giving us an opportunity to find our favor with God and hopefully find an everlasting life for them in eternity. And that is our Sunday School lesson this week. And my prayer for some people on this week, strengthen your faith. The Lord provides all you need to learn something worthy of sharing. So in the name of Jesus, we do pray and ask always. Amen. Thanks much for your time.